I'm Shannon Tiesi with The Diplomat, and I'm very pleased to be joining you today from the Embassy of Japan in Washington, D.C., where I'm very happy to be sitting down with Ambassador Sasai for the latest installment of our Diplomatic Access interview series. Ambassador, thank you so much for having us. Well, good to see you, Shona. From Japan's perspective, what are the greatest threats to regional security? Uh, uh, in traditional sense of the word threat, I don't think that, that there is a immediate physical threat of the thought. But as you know, there are always a uh, traditional uh, sense of uneasiness, concern, and uh, we had this one throughout the Cold War, and uh, especially uh, in Korean Peninsula, there is still uh, tensions and legacy of the Cold War between North and South. And, uh, and especially uh, North Korea is very much, uh, you know, uh, concern to us. And, uh, and their nuclear development, missile development, and their com confrontational and isolated uh, mode. We don't have uh, uh, big contact with the people there, and the government is, uh, is not uh, moving for the democracy. So uh, it's a very difficult uh, situation. So as we see, if there is no uh, halt uh, to this trend of North Korean uh, uh, missile and nuclear development, uh, there could be a, a potential threat. And I, w I don't think that uh, at this moment uh, we expect that, that there is a sudden uh, you know, contingency happening. But obviously, uh, we have to prepare for that. And there are two things we need to do. One is uh, uh, to uh, increase uh, our, uh, our deterrence uh, so that uh, North Korea would not misunderstand uh, the uh, level of our capacity to respond, whatever their uh, action might be. And this is one of the things. Uh, but at the same time, we have to be engaged with dialogue with them uh, so that uh, we could somehow work out the formula in which North Korea would abandon their nuclear weapons and also curb uh, their missile development so that uh, we could have a better and, uh, and hopefully normal relationship with them. That's one of the things that we have uh, at the area where uh, there is a potential threat. About China, uh, we don't define China uh, as a threat. Uh, China is a very important neighbor uh, to us throughout the uh, histories, and uh, three or five thousand history, and most of the time we have maintained a good relationship with them. But in the modern time, we had some difficult period, as you know, and uh, we, we fought a war. and. Uh, it was a very, very you know, uh, sad period. But uh, the, even after the war, uh, we restored the diplomatic relationship, and uh, we, uh, we increased our exchange of the people and uh, business and trade, and we supported uh, Chinese development throughout the, uh, co throughout the, uh, end, uh, the period uh, after the end of the war. So basically, we have maintained a good relationship uh, with China. And uh, we hope that uh, this would uh, be the norm uh, in, the, in the century ahead. And the problem we see at this moment is that, uh, one, we welcome Chinese economic development, and we are benefiting this uh, mutual dependence uh, with China on the economic front. As they move on, the Chinese economic development will be a good uh, source for the future Asian economy. So I think uh, we should welcome uh, their peaceful rise. The question is that, uh, is their uh, rise accompanying uh, with the, uh, some of the principles or values uh, w w w we do have, like uh, you know, uh, freedom, democracy, rule of law, and all this, uh, you know, peaceful engagement, and so these, the, the, there are concerns on this front. This uh, untransparent uh, uh, Chinese uh, military infrastructure buildup, and we really don't know uh, where uh, is the limit, where it is going. And uh, uh, recent assertive, uh, uh, you know, uh, policy on the maritime domain, 
whether it is East China Sea or South China Sea. So I think there are tensions rising, and, and I think uh, these are the, some of the areas where we need to have uh, uh, improvement, of the, especially uh, the improvement on the part of China to restrain, and so that uh, we could have a better relationship. I think at uh, this moment uh, we detect uh, some signs that uh, the, all this uh, uh, you know, aggressive uh, confrontational mode might not be necessarily Chinese interest. So uh, we welcome that recognition, and that recognition would prevail uh, so that uh, we could have a better and stable relationship with China. But at this moment, uh, you know, I, and hopefully in the future, uh, we don't have to think that the China are the threat. We should think that the China are the friend and partner in the future. So what can be done to address some of these problems? Well, I think we should uh, have uh, uh, more dialogue, and uh, not only uh, between people to people, but also uh, government to government, and, uh, and also business to business, different uh, uh, you know, uh, level. And uh, at this moment, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, we still think that uh, there should be more frequent exchanges of uh, dialogue between the leaders. We used to do it, uh, uh, you know, many years back. It's only recent time because of some of the tensions uh, we had witnessed. But uh, as we see at this moment, uh, there is a sign of improvement. I think we, we should push this forward. Mm. So uh, Prime Minister Shinzo Abe has mm. been advocating for an expanded role for Japan in the security realm, mm -hmm. both in the region um, and beyond mm. under the idea of proactive pacifism. Mm. How would you define this proactive pacifism and how is it the same or different from the pacifism Japan has embraced mm. for the past 70 years? Mm. I think this uh, notions of uh, pacifism uh, or I would say work for the peace, uh, we would uh, make contribution to the peace. That's, uh, that's consistent through, throughout the period after the war. I think that fundamentals would prevail. Uh, but uh, when we say proactive, means that uh, we sh simply don't sit back and, uh, and, uh, and, and uh, become bystanders uh, for some of the uh, problems arising, whether it is within the region or globally. Uh, there are all this, you know, uh, terrorism and uh, impact of uh, uh, the pollution, climate change, and, and even traditional security area, uh, you know, uh, uh, there are some, uh, you know, uh, conflicts uh, around the regions and also beyond the region. So uh, we should uh, make our defense postures more, uh, you know, adapting to the requirement of the day, changing securement environment. One of that is uh, for Japanese self-defense force uh, to do more uh, proactive work, for example, uh, for the United Nations uh, peacekeeping operations. For, for some time, uh, uh, under the interpretations of the traditional uh, constitutional uh, you know, uh, uh, theory, uh, we are not allowed to exercise a co collective defense force. That even uh, you know, made a self-defense force to, uh, to uh, go hand in hand with other peacekeeping partners under Bull Helmet, for example. So uh, these are the, some of the things that we need to address. And also when there is a contingency, say whether it is uh, Korean Peninsula, whatever the place is, uh, I think the, uh, we should not totally depend upon the American support. And we just uh, don't do our share of the work. And uh, we need to have more capacity to go hand in hand with the American and other countries uh, which are very close to uh, us uh, as a friend and ally. So uh, I think this is basically uh, peace-oriented, peace-seeking uh, effort uh, to make our stance more clear in terms of our own role for the peace. And uh, that's what uh, this proactive, uh, you know, pacifist view call. Uh, we, we call this uh, a proactive contribution to the peace.
Prime Minister Abe will be in the United States mm -hmm. later this month. Mm -hmm. So what will be the major topics under discussion as he meets with U.S. leaders? I think he would uh, discuss about the value of the uh, alliance, uh, alliance uh, uh, of, the, of the past, alliance of the present, alliance of the future. So uh, uh, he, would, um, he would talk and address the questions of uh, what we can do together with the United States not only for the sake of the region, but also beyond the region. As I said, there are lots of global agenda, like uh, Ebola and all this health agenda, environment and, uh, and terrorism. But uh, not only that, uh, we would obviously address this uh, regional uh, security agenda you were just uh, uh, make reference to. and. Uh, and in that context, uh, obviously, uh, uh, you know, we expect that there will be uh, much discussion about the uh, uh, future direction of American rebalancing policy. We would address this question about uh, proactive, uh, you know, uh, contribution to the peace. And uh, uh, what do we mean by that? And that would uh, dictate where we are heading for in the future. And that means that uh, we have to share the common vision uh, uh, for the region and beyond. And so uh, Prime Minister would address all these uh, you know, uh, uh, future visions uh, together with the President. And also uh, on the economic side, you know, uh, obviously uh, there is this uh, Trans-Pacific uh, Partnership Agenda. It's now coming to a, a final phase. So they would obviously ask less and to promote all this agenda together because this economic component is also an integral part of uh, regional, uh, you know, uh, rebalancing for the on the part of America, and on our part, this is a very important uh, segment of uh, Abenomics, where there is uh, economic reform now underway. So. Uh, uh, all this uh, TPP is also uh, important topics uh, to be addressed. Mm. So the Japan and the U.S. are only two out of 12 countries mm. involved in the TPP negotiations. Mm. But given the size of their economies, mm. they're often seen as the two major countries. Mm. How important is it for Japan and for the U.S.-Japan relationship for these negotiations to be successful? Well, uh, as I said it, um, this is the uh, uh, first of all, uh, not simply Japan-U.S. This is uh, basically designed to shape uh, the free trade order in the region. Uh, for example, this uh, this uh, you know trade negotiations uh, uh, is addressing not only uh, tariff and non-tariff issues, a uh, traditional one, but also uh, addressing all these uh, new rules. Uh, whether it is uh, intellectual property, labor, environment, and the uh, role of uh, government enterprises and uh, government procurement, all these uh, segment of the rules which are not necessarily covered uh, as a regional rule. So uh, this is designed to go after uh, 21st century high standard rule. Uh, and in that, uh, both the United States and Japan can not only benefit uh, from, uh, from getting all this free trade agreement, but also this could be the norm of the coming century for free trade in the region. Because if we believe that this Asia Pacific is a future of uh, world economic growth, world trade growth, then there has to be a high standard rule to govern the region. And this high sun rule in the, in the Asia Pacific could eventually prevail globally. And uh, that's what uh, we want to see. That's why this is very much strategic in a sense that uh, Japan and the United States would exercise the leadership uh, to, to work on the new rules to govern. When it comes to the China-Japan relationship, mm -hmm. we had a couple of years of tensions, mm -hmm. and now it seems like the relationship mm -hmm. is moving towards a thaw mm -hmm. uh, with restarted dialogues in a number of fields. Mm -hmm. So how can both Japan and China keep the relationship moving forward? 
I think the uh, most important thing is to uh, to work on the more engagement and sharpen the engagement and dialogue, all level. Mm -hmm. And uh, government should uh, put any restraint on free flow of the uh, people, uh, information, and uh, money, and all the uh, human, uh, you know, uh, <coughs> exchanges. Uh, and uh, under that, I think, obviously, uh, 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 between government to government, uh, there are some issues we need to address, obviously, some of the issues security uh, concerned. Uh, uh, we, uh, I just extrapolated uh, a time ago. Uh, but uh, as we see more uh, younger generation uh, people exchange themselves, I think uh, they, they are quite open uh, to what's happening in the other country. And some of the uh, uh, views are not necessarily, you know, uh, uh, given, uh, uh, you know, um, directly. Uh, and, uh, and they just take some of the uh, filtered information as a reality. So I think it's good for younger generation uh, to, uh, to see each other and see the other's country and have its own understanding rather than, uh, you know, getting a second or third hand, uh, you know, information about the other thing. And so that's the basis of uh, uh, good friendship. And, and, and other things, I think government to government, um, uh, uh, the, um, we need to work on the, uh, some of the uh, uh, crisis, uh, you know, uh, management mechanism, which is now under discussion between uh, uh, to governments. Uh, for example, when we address the, this maritime uh, question, we don't want to see any, uh, you know, accident and, and uh, based upon the misunderstanding. So there has to be proper uh, channel uh, to communicate uh, both on the sea and the ground and between the capital. And, uh, and that is a very important thing for us to see because the majority of people, both Japanese, I believe Chinese people, don't want to see the tension rising. It's government responsibility and, and to make sure that uh, we have a proper relationship and don't uh, get into too much, uh, you know, uh, uh, emotional, uh, you know, playing uh, with the public sentiment. So I think. Uh, all, all this uh, channel of the dialogue and the exchange is uh, becoming more important in demands and years ahead. Mm. A lot of attention has also mm. been focused on Japan's increased engagements with Southeast Asia, mm. uh, but Japan has been involved with this region for decades. Mm. So what is new about Japan's engagement with Southeast Asia today? Uh, 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 you see, the, uh, there are two things. So one is the uh, newly arising problem. Uh, and some of the security environment uh, we just discussed is one thing. Uh, and, and, uh, and a non-traditional uh, security agenda like, uh, you know, uh, uh, disaster management and also uh, other, you know, diseases. And, uh, and also terrorism and uh, you know piracies, all these things uh, are new issues. I think uh, uh, beyond uh, what we have done on helping and supporting uh, regional economic development uh, through more trade and investment and more aid. Aid means the economic assistance program. Throughout the years, we are the biggest uh, donor to Asian countries, and uh, uh, we, we still are, and uh, we will continue to do it, but at the same time, you, ha you have to respond to the uh, new requirement, like the one I just said, it, and also in terms of, uh, say, um, uh, regional connectivity. For example, ASEAN countries are talking about the uh, importance of uh, the connectivity. Connectivity means uh, uh, infrastructure connectivity activity and uh, economic connectivity and even political and security connectivity. So uh, 
all these uh, ASEAN unity and solidarity were in a position to do more, to support all this effort of uh, especially the ASEAN countries. And, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and also, uh, uh, if there are more role we can do it to make sure that uh, they are paths uh, of the democracy. And uh, most of the uh, Asian countries are democracy. And uh, there are different paths. But uh, uh, there is a, a degree, difference of degree. But uh, we are in a position to encourage and support all this uh, is, you know, uh, spread of uh, basic values of democracy, human rights, and rule of law. And there is still some way to go depending on the country involved. But I think uh, we, together with the United States, in a position to, uh, to support uh, these processes without, uh, you know, uh, getting into too much preaching. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much, mm -hmm. Ambassador, for that fascinating interview. Thank you very much. Good to see you. And thank you for joining us. Once again, I'm Shannon Tiezi from The Diplomat.